Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Together Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya It's a continuation with the chapter, The Pale Rata Process of Worship, from Canto A, Chapter 16, this is verse 22. Sri Adityar Uvacha Kainaham vidina brahman Upastasye jagatpatim Yatame satya sankalpo Viddhyat samanoratam Sri Adityar uvacha Kainaham vidya vidina brahman Upastasye jagatpatim Yatame satya sankalpo Viradhyat samanoratam Sri Adityar uvacha Kainaham vidina brahman Upastasye jagatpatim Yatame satya shankalpo Viradhyat samanoratam Sri Aditi Uvacha. Srimati Aditi began to pray. Kena, by which, Aham, I, Vidina, by regulative principles, Brahman, O Brahmana, Upastasye. Can please, Jagat Patim, 
the Lord of the universe, Jagannath. Yata, by which, may, my, Satya Sankalpa, desire may be actually be fulfilled. Hmm. Viradat may fulfill. Sa, he, the Supreme Lord. Manoratam, ambitions or desires. Translation. So now, um, Kishapa has given her the, the the idea that whatever she needs to succeed in, she has to approach the Supreme Lord. Now she's asking how to do that. Srimati Aditi says, O Brahmana, tell me the regulative principles by which I may worship the Supreme Master of the world so that the Lord will be pleased with me and fulfill all my desires. Purport. It is said, man proposes, God disposes. Thus a person may desire many things, but unless these desires are fulfilled by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they cannot be fulfilled. Fulfillment of desires is called Satya Sankalpa. Here the word Satya Sankalpa is very important. Aditi placed herself at the mercy of her husband so that he would give her directions by which to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that all her desires would be fulfilled. A disciple must first decide that he should worship the Supreme Lord and then the spiritual master will give the disciple correct directions. One cannot dictate to the spiritual master, just as a patient cannot demand that his physician prescribe a certain type of medicine. Here is the beginning of worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Vidna Bhajate Mam Jana Sukritor Jana Arto Jigyasu Arti Gyani Cha Bharatasava. O best among the bards, O best among the bards, four kinds of pious men render devotional service unto me. The distressed, the desire of wealth, the inquisitive, and he is searching for knowledge after the absolute truth. Aditi was Arta, a person in distress. She was very much aggrieved because her sons, the demigods, were bereft of everything. Thus she wanted to take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead under the direction of her husband, Kishyapa Muni. Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vrana Swami Iti Namani Namaste Sarasvati Divi Gauravari Vichara Namaste Sasuni Vari Paschatya Desadarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs> so, there's a, the statement here, unless the desires are fulfilled by the Supreme Lord, desires cannot be fulfilled. You may try to fulfill your desires, but you're under the control of the two energies, the material energy or the spiritual energy. You could have a choice which energy you want to put yourself under the control of. If you put yourself under the control of the spiritual energy, then automatically, by Krishna's grace, oh, those desires for Krishna consciousness and of advancement in Krishna consciousness will be automatically fulfilled. And even those desires that are not, but that's not for devotee, that's for people in general. But material desires are also fulfilled by the Supreme Lord because he's the controller of both energies. 
the spiritual energy and the material energy are under his full control. In Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Satcharacharam, Hetunan, Hinakunteya, Jagavi Parvi Partante. So, nothing can happen without the sanction of the Lord, either directly through the spiritual energy or indirectly through the material energy. So, we are always controlled. There's no question of being free from any control. When someone tries to be free from control, but then they're, they're controlled by their mind, which is another form of control. <laughs> so, no one can be free from control. So, the question is, where do you want to be controlled by? Prabhupada gives the example. Um, you're in a, you're in a, you live in a country and so there are people who are criminals, and those criminals are in jail. So the people who are not in jail, they're controlled by the state in a free sense of way. In other words, they have some freedom, and because they follow the laws of the country. And those who don't, they break the law, they're under the control of the jail system. But they're also under the control of the state, which, which authorizes and institutes the jail. So the state is controlling both the jail and the free people. But at the same time, someone is free and someone is not. So in the same way, Krishna is controlling both material and spiritual energy. So the question of control is not a matter of being in our hands. And this is the principle that makes devotional service uh, nice. When we think we're in control, we act in a certain way to get a particular type of results, and then when the results don't come according to our own desires, when we feel unhappy, or there's some disappointment, something negative appears. But if you know you're not in control, and you simply act, and whatever happens is happening by the grace of the Lord. And it's always like that. But then at least you're in a position to know that and also to surrender to the Lord. So one who is surrendered to the Lord will know that why, why should I do anything independent when everything is there under the control of the Lord? So I can be controlled by his prison arrangement or by his free arrangement. When you're under the control of Krishna, you're still under control, but you're free. Free, what is that free? Freedom, your freedom, the spirit is free. It's no longer locked into the mind and the body and the senses which are dictating how one should live their life and act in that way. So that freedom is natural because the soul is not encumbered. And restriction means material life. There's no restriction in spiritual life. But that doesn't mean you do anything you want. What it means is that you have the uh, opportunity to express your true nature in a very natural way, and that is to serve and to love God, which is actually the, the nature of the soul's existence. So freedom means to come back to your natural position. <laughs> That's what freedom means. It doesn't mean to act independently. Sometimes we see people think, well, I'm free, I can do anything I want. No, nobody can do that. That's simply a, a wrong mindset because if you do anything you want, you get punished by the laws of material nature or, or by some authority or something. Or you get punished simply by the results of your activities. So no one can be free. <laughs> so here, Aditi, she knows that. And she's been given the direction. Now she wants to know how to carry out the instructions that will be successful in pleasing the Lord because she knows that unless she pleases the Lord, her desire cannot be fulfilled. So then he will give her a set of, and these are called the Peo Vrata process of worship. And this chapter goes on, she performs certain austerities and you'll see that uh, 
in this ver this chapter goes on to uh, let me see. 62 verses in this chapter. So then you'll see how she performs this pray over at the worship. And somehow you'll see the results. We won't speak about that now. But now here the main thing is now now she'll receive instructions from, from her husband who is in the role of her spiritual master. And uh, now, if she wants to do the instructions in her own way, different than her, what her spiritual master is giving her, she won't get the results. She has to follow it according to how that instruction is given and ask questions to understand how to execute the instructions so she's clear on how to do it. Same with a disciple. It says a disciple should inquire regularly from the spiritual master how can I engage in devotional service? Or how can I satisfy you, or satisfy you? Or what can I do to make advancement in devotional service? These are questions that must be asked. It's not optional. Sometimes we see devotees, they go, they get initiated, and they don't even contact their spiritual master. They go off on their own, and they think they're okay in their devotional life. But they're not. <laughs> Material energy is controlling them, and, and they're thinking they're fine. Because one has to revitalize and re-spiritual, not re-spiritualize, be revitalize one's understanding of how to execute devotional service. Because Maya is strong. And if we go through a routine after some time, we find ourselves doing things different or even thinking differently. It's just the way the material energy works. It always is changing us. So therefore, one should regularly inquire from the spiritual master, how can I make advancement in devotional service? Or what service can I do? Or what attachment do I need to get rid of? So that's the job of the spiritual master. His main service to Krishna is to engage his disciples in devotional service. So, but if, but sometimes people want to take the medicine in a different way. Just like, say you go to a doctor, and the doctor says, okay, here, this is the disease, and you take one tablet in the morning after breakfast and one tablet in the evening after evening meal. And you do this for 10 days. And they gives you 20 tablets, Okay. So you go home and you think, well, it's going to take me 10 days to get rid of this disease. So why don't I just take all 20 tablets today? <laughs> and then that way I'll get rid of the disease in one day. So why wait over 20 day, 10 days, you know? Might as well just accelerate it. You know. this, this doctor of mine, he just wants to prolong my suffering. But I know if I take the, all the tablets at once, I'll get cured real fast, yeah. And so that's t interpreting the instructions in your own way <laughs> and thinking that you know better than the physician in the same way, thinking you know better than the spiritual master. Sometimes the devotees will calculate the spiritual master's instructions by logical, material understanding. Well, it doesn't really make sense logically. Therefore, there must be some change in order for it to work. And you'll see, and this is the experience, that people either don't follow or do it their own way like that. If there is some apparent discrepancy in the instructions in terms of the practical application, then the disciples should think, oh, let me ask my spiritual master how to, to apply these instructions. In other words, to get a clearer understanding, one has to ask about the instructions so one is clear so they can execute their devotional service. Now, there are some disciples can't follow certain instructions. And so the spiritual master knows that 
and doesn't give that disciple those instructions because they just can't do it. And they just won't do it. And therefore, rather than causing them to commit guru avagya, what means disobeying the orders of the spiritual master, the spiritual master will give them instructions they can follow just to keep them connected and then gradually, hopefully, they'll make some advancement and it gives them a little bit more difficult instructions. And so that's how it works. But if the spiritual master sometimes he gives instructions that, that are too difficult to follow and people don't follow it, then he puts his disciple in a difficult situation. So he has to be able to see that. What will work for this person? But sometimes the instructions are a little bit more difficult than we apparently think we can do. And so we might decide to change the instructions around like that. So the longer, so the spiritual master is always eager to help his disciple, as a Krishna is always eager to help every living entity. <coughs> Therefore, the disciple should be eager to make advancement in devotional service. Like that. So then Prabhupada explains that people come to devotional service from four different reasons. Distress. In other words, some because of material suffering, which is most of us, we, we couldn't make it in material world or we're suffering materially. And we look for another type of lifestyle that will relieve that. We've tried to readjust the material energy to make it work in according to how we want it to work. It doesn't do that. So now we think, well, maybe spiritual life is the answer to my problems. So they come to get rid of the distress. Some people come because they're, they're poor. They need money or they want some extra money, so they know that by going to God and praying to God and worshiping God, and maybe serving God, that they can also gain more material wealth. And then, people who are inquisitive, they hear about spiritual life, they see the devotees, they get a little curious, what is this about? So they investigate, and then they come to practice Krishna consciousness to get the experience themselves. And then the last one is those who are searching for the absolute truth. They're looking for the, re the real goal of life. What is the real goal of life? And then they come across Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then they take up Krishna consciousness. So Krishna calls these four persons Mahatma. Jai. Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Why does he call them Mahatma? Because they've come to the right place. Although maybe, maybe come for material reasons, still they came to the right place. So many people come to Krishna consciousness because of distress. And because of that, they um, practice devotional service. And as they practice devotional service, don't leave before you f might finish this sentence. But after they practice devotional service for a little while, their distress goes away. And then they think, oh, my distress is gone. Now I can go back to material life and be happy. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> so they'll practice and keep their desire for relief of distress as their motivation for spiritual life. But... Once you come, one should understand that there is another goal, which is the real goal, which is the ultimate goal, which is the perfect goal, Prema Pumartha Mahan, to develop love for Krishna. That is the only goal of devotional service. So unless one gives up the initial reasons for coming to Krishna consciousness as a means for satisfying these reasons or desires, then one will may also then go back to material life when, after some time after practicing Krishna consciousness. So one has to understand that the nature of the soul is ananda, and there's no ananda in material life. <laughs> ananda is in spiritual life. Ananda means bliss, happiness, joyfulness. 
one can find that only on the spiritual platform in relationship to Krishna. <laughs> and therefore, one, therefore, if one understands that, one will stick to Krishna consciousness and continue until they make more and more advancement. Then when they get fixed, when they get to the point of uh, nishta, if you want to go, you can go anytime. And they get to the point of nishta, being fixed in Krishna consciousness, and then they're not moved by what happens, by happiness and distress, or by material situations. Before then, we become what we call fair-weather devotees. If everything's going okay, I'm kijai, but if there's nothing, and everything's not going okay instead of kijai, it's goodbye. <laughs> So, uh, that's not Krishna consciousness, nor is it success in any activity of life. One has to stick to the process and know that in, in due course of time, one will experience uh, transcendental happiness and unlimited knowledge. It's a matter of just staying with the process. But still, people come for different reasons, and that's fine. But those who come actually... For it says here, the first two, the ones who are distressed and the desires of wealth, they've come for material reasons. And those who are inquisitive and those who are in search of knowledge, they've come for higher reasons, other than material reasons. And so they'll become, they'll make more faster advancement in Krishna consciousness. The inquisitive and especially those who are searching for knowledge of the Supreme Lord. What is, what is the nature of God? What is my relationship with, that, with God? And how to experience that relationship? And those who are in that position will make uh, fast advancement in devotional service. But everyone can make advancement in devotional service if they stick to the process no matter what. So Aditi, she's, uh, she's art, art, Arta, she's distressed. She wants to, to relieve the distress of her children. The mother becomes distressed when the children become distressed because of the connection. So she's distressed because her children are distressed and so therefore she's looking for a way to relieve her distress and therefore she approaches her husband for guidance and direction. Now he's going to give her those instructions. And then she will have complete faith in it. Here's another thing. Well, when we engage in devotional service, we receive instructions. We should have faith in the instruction. Because by having faith in the instruction, the enthusiasm and the ability to carry it out become more natural and easy. So, yeah, that is required also, to have faith that the instructions are the best thing for me. Hmm. And not to simply think, well, maybe there's another instruction that I don't know about. Just try to execute the instructions, get clarification on how to do that, and you'll make advancement in devotional service. Okay, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. How many people do we have online? Hmm? Four? Four? Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Okay. Okay. Any comments, questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for giving this class to all of us. Um, I'm a little concerned about this reluctance of us disciples to follow your orders, actually. And uh, why that's we true. don't... That's true in Kali Yuga, everywhere. Every guru has that problem. <laughs> Not just me. <laughs> some more, some less. <laughs> I was just reading some writing about one spiritual master 
And he was saying about certain disciples, you know, they just stop writing him, they go away, and they do their own thing. But he, he writes, uh, I don't give them any instructions right now, I just try to encourage them in the, in the activities of devotional service, that's all. So, you know, people are not ready in Kali Yuga to surrender. Kali Yuga is too difficult for people to surrender. So, or there's conditional surrender. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm guilty of this myself, so I'm just thinking. What is what is actually surrender? I'll, I'll see if you can respond to this. This is actually surrender. Let's see if you know this. Okay, I'm going to say one word, and you respond to the word. Okay? Everybody ready? Jump. How high? How high. That's surrender. <laughs> Spiritual master says jump, and the disciple says, how high should I jump? <laughs> That's surrender. <laughs> if you haven't got to that point, you haven't surrendered yet. <laughs> That's it. But we don't, you know, it's more like a, you know, business deal. <laughs> but that doesn't work. Only those who are yasya devi para bhaktir, tata devi, tata guru, tasyaita kartita itarta, prakasananta mahatmanaha. Only those who have complete faith, implicit faith in, in the Lord and the spiritual master, are they on the, will they make the spiritual platform? Otherwise, it's not possible. This, the, the instructions of the spiritual master are the means by which you get on the spiritual platform. Otherwise, you can't do that. And the spiritual master by nature is very kind. He's not going to give the disciple difficult things. He's going to somehow or other move them along. But then again, when he sees there's some attachment or some uh, leth lethargy, he has to push. And that's important. So, uh, this is just hypothetical. I'm a young man and I really want to get married. I really want to get married. But my spiritual master says, this is not a good idea for you. I think it's better, you know, if you stay single. But I'm so hell-bent on getting married, then the spiritual master reluctantly says, all right, get married. Is this, is this what happens usually? You mentioned a particular instruction that is uh, exempt from all other forms of instructions. If the disciple wants to get married and the spiritual master says don't, then the guru will say, okay, stay, uh, get married, but let me see how much you can advance. In other words, getting married or not getting married, you have to show by that choice you make that you're going to make advancement. Sometimes the spiritual master will say, get married. And he say, no, no, I don't want to. All right, then let me see how much you can then... Prove to me that you don't need a wife by making advancement. So, in other words, that, that instruction is not an absolute principle. It's a way to inspire the devotee to surrender more, either way. All right, you're not going to do it. Let me see the advancement. All right, you're going to do it. Let me see the advancement. So, in that case, we leave it up to the disciple. Mm -hmm. But what if by not following, they land up in more trouble that they are in already? I mean, then they should, then the spiritual master will come by and say, follow my instruction. You prove that you can't make advancement by on your own, so now prove, now follow that instruction. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm 
But generally, we ask women to get married. Though. Men, men generally do better in Krishna consciousness when they're not married, and women do better when they are married. So that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada also said that. He said, uh, all the women should get married and all the, Brahm all the men should stay brahmachari. He said that in a group meeting. And then everybody looked at Prabhupada like, what did he say? <laughs> and then he turned to the, to the uh, temple authorities and he said, you guys, you have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> all the women get married and all the men stay brahmachari. You got it. You're first. No, but I still don't clear. Uh, I don't have a clear question, you know. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Can woman uh, be brahmachari if she thinks the, she will be purified yeah. and uh, go uh, faster to Krishna? Well, the ch a woman's body is designed in such a way as to have children. And so her biological and psychophysical nature is more in a mood of dependence. Now, if she can become completely dependent on Krishna and engage in devotional service, then she can, she can make progress without getting married. But generally, that's not the case. There are women who don't get married and can make advancement. Generally, women make advancement after they go through the marriage life, after having children, and then their children could grow up, they become really good devotees. The best, even better than the men. But usually they have to go through that, that experience in life of having a family, having a husband, and taking care of children. And it's, but it's not like it's an absolute principle. It's just there. It's just a woman's nature. That's all. But if you can transcend that nature and stay fixed in devotional service, then uh, it's uh, yeah. Then you, the one can stay free from getting involved with married life. That's possible, but it's rare for women. It's hard. It's much harder. Mm -hmm. Relationship. I yeah. have a relationship, and I think it's better for me because I don't have a time. I want to purify, clearly okay. purify myself. No one should force you, but at the same time, you should make sure you're making an advancement and not simply staying single and then still have so many problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I understand. I know how to... I understand, you. I understand okay. your question. Okay. Yeah. And I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Go ahead, try. <laughs> but take association of other ladies so you get support and good and, and good and good and uh, good association. Men can be more independent because that's their nature. Just like Prabhupada said, a man can travel all around the world by his own. A 16-year-old boy can travel all around the world by his own. But a 16-year-old girl can't do that. <laughs> you see, there is, a, there is a biological, physical, cycle nature, nature between the two. And therefore, the Vedic culture recognizes that and then uh, gives recommendations accordingly. But there are women who never get married and can make progress in devotional service. And we have that in Vedic culture, there are some really uh, fantastic, but usually it takes them a few lifetimes to get to that stage. <laughs> 
Okay. Is it all right to I wear this color? Is it right? It's a nice color. <laughs> because some guys don't like it. I wear. So is it right or I'm wrong? Well, you have to ask the temple authorities. I don't really know whether uh, you're wearing that color to show that you are you want to remain. You 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 you, you want to you want to make a statement that you want to remain free from marriage by wearing that color. Yeah, but we you need advice from authorities, and so speak to the temple authorities and find out how best you can practice Krishna consciousness. In that condition, I don't have any problems with you wearing that color. It's, uh, it's not with, I don't really, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> yeah. But when a woman gets to a certain stage where she's definitely not going to get married, she puts on all white. Yeah. Yeah. Not shaving, no, not shaving the head. No, there's no, there's no shaving the head. Prabhupada said, no ugly gopis. <laughs> he didn't want women to shave their head. This is not the idea. We, I saw that happen and it just, it looks really bad. This, you know, it's not necessary. It's not part of our culture. Women should keep hair and that's, the, that, that's, that's, that's proper. Okay, she's, yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna, uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, I um, would like to ask about uh, this uh, the, the, uh, desire because um, um, I, I don't have children, so I don't uh, understand, maybe I don't understand very well. But I ask if it's like a, an attachment uh, or is like a natural feeling for the children? <laughs> well, yeah, it is. It's an attachment. attachment. Yeah, she's attached because her children, who are the demigods, many of them, not all of them, are demigods and they no longer have their kingdom. So she's distressed because they don't have their kingdom anymore. And she's their mother. So, yeah, she's distressed in that way. Kashyapa is their father, but he's not distressed. So it's her attachment, yeah. It's like ma ma mother attachment. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it says that because of their, that's because they're his, her sons, yeah. It's not be, because of particular interest uh, in this uh, kind of activities or this, I mean this, um, they have uh, distress and she wants also to be relief. Yeah, she knows they're distressed and she's distressed because they're distressed. But the father is not in distress. <laughs> no, because mm, he has better. He has more vision. He can see a, a, a bigger plan coming. Yeah. Okay. She can't yeah. say it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, Guru Maharaj, on the subject of you know the color of the dress that we are wearing, does it actually help our mental condition and our resolve? by changing the color of the dress we Do you wear. Know what, you know what the saffron stands for? You know mm -mm. what the color saffron stands for? Renunciation? Well, what is it? Take, it? take it to another level. Why does that color give you renunciation? Why did orange be, get connected to renunciation? Why not blue? Why not red or, or green? Because it's the color of the sun and light, maybe knowledge. You're getting close. It's the color of fire. Fire. And fire means to burn up. Mm. 
So burn up means to to get rid of or renounce. Mm -hmm. So it's the color of fire. That's why it's that's that color is being used like that. Mm -hmm. So it's actually helpful and beneficial. It says it it helps to uh, let everyone else know what is your mood. You know, hmm. it's not about you. It's for ever everyone else, hmm. and it's for your own understanding. Brahmacharis and sannyasis they work for saffron. And the grihasthas can choose whatever they want, what colors they want to wear. Generally, Jigihastas wear white. Generally, the men. Um, re red and blue before the deity is not me is not allowed. Mm. It's, that's mentioned in the Mekta devotion. Mm. We don't wear really bright bright colors before the deity because we don't want to attract people's attention away from the deity and on us wearing bright colors. Mm. That's proper. Temple etiquette. That's in the nectar of devotion. You can read that. So then, a woman of any age who wants to be renounced can wear saffron. Mm, I I won't. I don't recommend it. No, but I don't have any objection either. I'm. I don't. I don't recommend it. Someone. Asked, some woman asked me. She goes renounced. I would say, let's see. Continue any devotional service for a while and. Renunciation really means for women is to actually put on white. Mm -hmm. White is the color, not not saffron. Mm -hmm. um, one who's generally yeah, but there has been young women who also wear white. But you can, this cannot be done independently. It has to be given. It has to be recommended by the spiritual master and by the temple authorities. You can't just do it yourself and expect that it's the proper thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. It has to be recommended by your temple authorities. Thank you. Because you're, 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 you're sending a message by a certain, like that. When I saw you wearing orange, I thought, wow, she likes orange. <laughs> That's all I thought. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think you were sending a message. <laughs> so. I can't wear many other colors because it's outside of the... You know. <clears throat> I have a funny story in that regard, but it's t it takes too long to tell, so I won't. I'll tell it some other time. Because before I came to Krishna consciousness, I, I like to wear nice clothes and not fancy, but different kinds of colors, you know. And I had the same kind of clothes in, in different colors, changing the different colors. But, you know, when I came to Krishna consciousness, it wasn't a problem. I wasn't thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? I can't have my colors. That was easy. And, you know, but I would recommend if you really want to stop people criticizing you, I would recommend you wear just normal colors. Otherwise, you're going to find criticism. There's going to be, you know, and you can avoid that. Because there is a statement in the Shastras, it's in Niti Shastras, it says, you eat to please yourself, you dress to please others. You eat to please yourself, you dress to please others. So the way we dress is the way we present ourselves before others. And if it's pleasing to others, then that makes that, that, makes that environment more friendly or more, you know, yeah. But nowadays people don't care how they look, you know. <laughs> they think, I'm going to look the way I want. If you don't like it, too bad. <laughs> it's my choice. No, but that's against uh, social etiquette. Social etiquette means you, you dress to please others. 
but in now it's we eat to please the other person and we dress to please ourselves it's backwards that's kali yuga right you go to um, an indian house and they say and you're eating prashad and they say would you like more no i'm full no no please take more oh no 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 have some more please and then they cry <laughs> So we say, all right, a little bit more. Because if they ask you to say more, if you need, and you say no, no means a little bit more when you say no. But if you go like this, that means no more, right? Yeah. And then you go like this. That's the signal for no more. But if you say no, that means a little more. <laughs> So those of you who don't have that association with the Indian culture, you have to learn these things. <laughs> right? So many sannyasis have gotten sick. <laughs> it's because they try to please the host, you know. <laughs> So yeah, but the scriptures say you eat to please yourself and you dress to please others. So I would suggest that you, you know, in order to avoid criticism and people speaking on the side, better not to wear that, I would suggest. I think uh, maybe it will not be funny anymore after a couple of days. It will not be? Important for others after a couple of days, but because In other I'm words, not important. Pe people will get used to it. Yeah. That's possible. But then you're, you're always going to meet other people. <laughs> they won't get used to it. <laughs> I, I won't say I, anything. You You have to decide, but... My suggestion is to avoid, you know, anything negative. I would, I would suggest you, you don't follow the saffron program. Um, I'm open to um, uh, direction of the guru when I find him, and when I talk him deeply about this, mm. I don't want to talk uh, public because there is something All more right. deeply. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, when I spoke with the uh, guru that I found or he found me, I will be free to change a color if he does, if he said to change. Okay. Okay. I will do anything like he said. Okay, anything. then that's good. I'm not... S You're not attached. N yes. Okay. Uh, well, that's good. Then that's, that, that's, what, that's what you should follow. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai.